Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the heathen, not seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in this Lord I see edited sunrise and sundown. Him I go there like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. Him lift never I go wither, and whatsoever him doeth shall prosper. Let the people of the Most High say, Joe! Well, my name is Black Rasta, and this is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo. Where we speak truth to power. Now, in every traditional African home, we have a black pot. And every time it rests on the fire, we know there is something sumptuous cooking. What is sumptuously cooking in our black pot today? My brother, my sister, so many stories one more time. And we have to take our time to go through this because it is our duty in the service of God and country. Of course, we don't like to criticize, but if we must criticize, we will. Only to build and not to destroy. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. My brother, my sister, I'm going to begin with the very first story, which I have titled, Fugitive Ken Ofori Atta. Fugitive Ken Ofori Atta. Now, who is a fugitive? A man who runs away from the law, right? All right. Now, let us break it down. My brother, my sister, Ken Oforiata, the finance minister of the Republic of Ghana, has written a letter to Parliament telling Parliament, I am not available for any questioning. What does it mean? What are the questions all about? Hey, Ken Oforiata has made it clear that he's unable to face the Parliament to answer questions. And what is his reason? Now, it's slapped on the headlines, the front pages and banner headlines all over the country. Ofori Atta informed Parliament he won't be available for questioning, and this is attributed to the utterances of Anok Dompre. Hear me now. Now, Ken Ofori Atta is the finance minister of the Republic of Ghana, the man who has thrown this country into some unprecedented mess with arrogance and foolhardiness. My brother and my sister, they know it all, so they will never listen to anybody. Now they've gone to the end of the road, crashed, and they are turning around asking if people have ideas. My brother and my sister, Ken Oforiata is unable to meet the Parliament House of Ghana to answer questions on the economy. And the reason is that he is busily gathering data and information so that he can adequately answer questions. When is he going to finish gathering the data? In fact, I am sure that if these people knew that this was the amount of pressure they were going to be uh, getting whilst in power, some of them would have revised and reviewed their ideas and their assumptions and, of course, their ambitions of being in government. Now, the finance minister is the cousin of uh, the president. They are like two twins. Even though one of them has a pot belly and the other one has a puffy face. My brother, my sister, this is the president alongside his finance minister. And they are those who are running the business in this country. One looks like a reverend minister, whilst the other one looks like a business tycoon. But there is deception, my brother, my sister, anytime you look them in the eyeballs. Oforiata is unable to talk to the people of this country. And what does the minority have to say? 
Haruna Idrisu says what? Why is it that Kenoforia Tak cannot come to the parliament house so that they will grill him because Ghanaians want answers? It is simple. He says, Oforiata has lost touch with economic realities. Jesus have mercy. Hey! If a country's backbone is the economy, and the captain of the economy has lost touch with economic realities, it means we are living in oblivion. It means that we are living in a certain kind of world that is non-existent, like El Dorado. My brother, my sister, hear me now. Now the minority leader in the parliament house of Ghana is called Haruna Idrisu. And this is what he has to say. If the man has truly lost touch with modern day reality, bothering the economy, then we are doomed. Now, my brother, my sister, as if to say, hey, this is just the tip of the iceberg. One of uh, Ghana's favorite local actors is Kwekumenu. And Kwekumenu looks at the whole thing. And what he understands about economics and the economy is that there should be money in his pocket. And that money should be able to buy a certain basket of goods and services. He is also crying out loud. What is he saying? Kweku Menu bemoans increase in price of goods and services. You know what that means? Inflation. Now, when you read the story, Kweku Menu said, before he traveled to Europe, he went to ask for the price of some wires which he wanted to use in the wiring of his house. And when he returned from Europe just after a few days, there was a 100% increase. In fact, more than 100% increase. And what is Ken Ofori Atta, the fugitive, saying? He says that he's blaming all these, all these things. He claims he will put the blame on who? The minority. Hey! Finance minister blames minority for CD depreciation. Hallelujah! Hey! What is happening in this country, brethren? Has he truly lost touch with modern day economics? What has the minority done to depreciate the CD? Is the minority that powerful? to be able to control the whole economy, then what is the importance of the majority? If the minority can cause the depreciation and the free fall of the city with such an aficionado, eh, a gargantuan, big, tall oak tree like Baumia, how come Baumia, the king of economics, in fact, the father of modern day economics is sitting right there and minority is able to go behind him and depreciate the city. What a joke of a country. Huh? Did you hear that? Oforiata says that the minority in the country is responsible for the depreciation of the city. When your uncle was busily flying all over the place with prostitutes following him night and day. When your uncle grew his pot belly, when he should have grown the economy, when your uncle became hard-eared and never listened to anybody's advice, did you tell him that it was going to affect the economy? When your uncle and you went on your borrowing spree, did you ever sit back to think and say, hey, are we not selling the future out? What would the next generation think of us? Today you are blaming the minority? That the minority is responsible for your foolhardiness and your lack of thought and incompetence? You guys speak English as if you manufactured English. You guys went to all the big schools in the world, yet you are worse than people who have never been to school. You are worse than Satan. You know why? If Oforiata can blame the minority, then it means the minority is more powerful than the majority. Only in the Ghana Guinness Book of Records that the minority 
is more populous than the majority. Hallelujah. Only in Ghana do we have the saying that minority carries the vote. Everywhere in the world is majority carries the vote. But in Ghana, it is minority carries the vote. My brother, my sister, what is happening to the economy? And listen to what Ophoriata says. He says, he's also blaming the Ukraine-Russian war for the depreciation of the city and hardship in the country. Hallelujah. 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 Kadama we gromabe. Boy. Skip a judge. What that? Hear me now. Ukraine Russian war. Of course, that had an effect and will still have an effect around the world. But Ghana is behaving as if it is the only country on an island. That is suffering all the intricacies and vicissitudes of the Russian-Ukrainian war. Can I break it down? Can I break it down? Ha! Ha! All over the world, everybody is going through a certain form of trauma. But that is where we say the fittest survive, Kai. The fittest survive. Now, if you are a weakling, by virtue of natural selection... You will be wiped out of the face of the earth with some kind of power. Somebody won't understand this until he goes back to school. Hallelujah. 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 Hear me now, brethren. Ophoriata and his pot bellied uncle, Nana Akufu Ado, have swallowed enough money now. They walk like toads on heat. You know a toad, when it's on heat, it goes crawl, crawl, crawl. And only people with four ears can understand what the, cook, the, 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 the croaking means. My brother and my sister, minority is responsible for the depreciation of the city. Depreciation of the city. Hey, Ukraine-Russian war, responsible for the depreciation of the city. So what? And today... So we should do what? Cry? What are they saying? What are they doing to be able to fix the economy? I hear they had a crisis meeting where they all met and chewed pork and drank a lot of alcohol and then talked gibberish and walked away. They are talking about austerity measures, right? They are talking about how they can bring down the, I mean, expenditure of the country. And I look up in heaven. I find no answers. Then I look down on earth. I look all over the place and I tell myself, hey. Finally, Ophoriata says, there's one other thing which is causing the depreciation of the city. One other thing that is making the country go into trouble, and that is E-Levy. He says because E-Levy has not been approved, for that matter, the country is in crisis. What a government. What a government. Now they are thinking about taking away free SHS. That same thing that their flagship program that brought them into power. They want to disown it. Now they are thinking about cutting down their own executive, huge executive salaries. Whatever they will do to fix the economy is not my business. Neither is it your business. You are not being paid to fix the economy. Somebody's uncle and himself are supposed to fix the economy. That is why we pay them. We look up to them, and if they don't do it, we have the right to speak truth to power and let them know that they are traitors. They have let us down. They lied to us before they came into power. We believe them, and they led us into the lion's den. Right now, we can only find bones all over the country. All human beings have been led to the lion's den to be eaten. My brother, my sister, this is the Black Thought, a.k.a. Kokushunumo, where we speak truth to power. And of course, I dash it away and deal with the next thing. Now the next thing I want to look at, I've decided to title it, Savior NDC. Savior NDC.
the ultimate question mark. What is it all about? Hear me now. My brother, my sister, Felix Oposukwache was a deputy information minister of the NDC. The government that was in power until it was ousted and the Port Valley president brought in. Hear me now. Felix Oposukwache has said something. And he slapped on all the front pages that you can find in our newsreel. Hardship will continue until Ghanaians vote back NDC into office. And this is the young man called Ofosukwachi. Oh, Jesus. By what magic? Mahama was in power. We all saw how he performed abysmally. But the abysmal performance of Mahama is far better than the best of Nana Kufuado. True or false? Today, Mahama, who you was hiding at the time that Nana Kufuado came into power, can walk boldly, shoulder high, and tell people, you see, when we were working, some people were in the periphery saying what? That they could do it better than us. They told us that the land had money, but bad leadership spoiled everything. Now they are in power. Can you speak? Oposukwachi says, the only way forward for Ghana is to bring back the NDC or else hardship will continue. Let me tell you, brother, I know you are politicking. It's the same politics that we are fighting. What plans do you have in place? To perform better than what you did at the time that Guinea fowls flew all the way to Ukraine. At the time that we had the stupid branding of buses and money was paid to prostitutes. What else, what differently is the NDC coming to do? Different from what you did the other time that made Ghanaians chase you out. That is what we want to hear. Is it like a threat? That, oh, hardship will continue until the NDC is voted back into power. I have a problem. What are you going to do differently? Is Mahama still going to come around and be branding verses? Or has Mahama learned his lessons? Is Mahama going to come around and be throwing away money like Pekple? Like he did the last time he was in power? Yes, Nana Kufuado has failed us. We do not want to see Nana Kufuado again. We are fed up with him and his cousins and nieces and family in power. But instead of just throwing out a blanket statement and telling us, oh, uh, until the NDC is voted back, hardship is going to continue. I want to remind you that when the NDC was in power, there was still hardship. We saw how bribery and corruption got so rife in the government of Mahama. We saw how the NDC, even under Rawlings, the so-called founder, terrorized Ghanaians. In fact, the NDC has done more harm to Ghanaians in modern times than any other party in Ghana. Look how many people the PNDC, NDC regime slaughtered night and day. Judges were slaughtered. Rawlings and his foolhardy colleagues, Yokogari credit eating guys, went out killing people as if they had gone mad. We all saw how during the so called revolution, they beat up people at Kajetia. We all saw how Ghanaian businesses were collapsed, like Nana Akuf, although the pot bellied man is doing to our businesses now. Rawlings did worse than that. Was he not a member of the NDC? In fact, we have suffered more atrocities in the hands of the NDC, more than in the hands of the modern day NPP. But if you go back into history before Rawlings and combine all the after effects, 
In fact, NPP, the UP tradition, and so on and so forth, my brother, they were worse than the devil. We remember the father of Nana Kufuado and all the other people chasing Nkrumah night and day. We remember how all of them decided to make it worse for all of us, my brother, my sister. How did they do it? They bombed Nkrumah night and day. They were not ready for anything that would lead Ghana into prosperity. My brother, my sister, they even at a point wanted to break away from Ghana. That is why I am not a person who is interested in the UP NPP tradition because their history is demonic and devilish. If I had the power to decide who should be a Ghanaian, the UP tradition should belong to Satan. Because of the wicked history they meted out to us. And today I hear Asante Hini say, oh, eh, 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 Nkrumah hated Asante. By what history? It's ignorance. Total ignorance. You are called King Solomon. So when you talk, people expect to hear wisdom. Nkrumah hated Asante. How? Nkrumah hated Asante. How? Let me know. Hey, hey, no NDC is going to be able to make this country a better place. It is the content that you are coming with that is different from what you gave to us earlier. As for Nana Kufuado and his breaking eight, I wonder which Ghanaian would vote for them again. In the interim, my brother, my sister, this is the Black Fort, a.k.a. Kukushunumu, where we speak truth to power. I'm not going to waste too much time on that. I'm going to dash it away and deal with the next thing. And it's very interesting to me. Now, the next thing I want to look at, I've decided to title it, Ghana Led to the Slaughter. What do we mean when we say somebody has been led to the slaughterhouse or the slaughter? It means that you are a sacrificial lamb. How many people are ready to become sacrificial lambs for Ghana? Now Ghana is in crisis. Who are those who would save Ghana from this crisis situation? How many people are ready to lay down their lives as a foundation to see the economy grow? That is the big question out. Now Ablakwa is a guy that I admire so much. He has matured into politics. And once in a while, he flings out some surprises. And we all are baffled. Ablakwa says that he agrees with a 40% pay cut. As an MP, he's okay if they cut his salary by 40%. It means he, if he was receiving 100 Ghana cities, he would be okay to take 60 cities now. And the 40 cities would go into building the economy. But under one condition. Don't be too fast. Ablakwa says, under a government that blows money without sense, he would not give his 40% cut for anything. Ablakwa says, 40% pay cut. For a government that is senseless when it comes to spending, he prefers that that 40% cut, he would rather take it to his constituency and help build that constituency. Do you agree with him? Yes. My brother, if we all realize that the ship is sinking and we all have to find a way of sealing the holes that are making the ship sink, and there are other people who are busily boring holes in the side of the ship. Would you still waste your time to seal holes when more holes are being bored into the ship? Ablakwa says no. But here it is. There's another interesting thing. Now, the CCT, Coalition of Consent Teachers, their chairman is called King Ali Awudu. 
Now King Ali Audu, oh Jesus, has come out to say something. They are not ready to have the government take 10% of their salary to pay for rent. Now some teachers are living in the government bungalow. And for that matter, government says, because of the pressure we are going through, teachers, we will not take 10% of your salary to pay for accommodation and rent. The government says, pay 10% rent on bungalows to help government solve your conditions of service. And this is Dr. Ankara, or Shri Ankara, to teachers. And the CCT, Coalition of Concerned Teachers, headed right now by King Ali Audu, says, no, we won't do that. And if you put pressure on us, we are going to vacate the whole place, carry our blankets and beds, and leave your bungalows for you empty. What agreement did you have with us at the beginning? You told us that you were going to fully finish all these bungalows so that we teachers can take advantage of that. But when we came in, the whole place was empty. We had to buy our own beds, buy our own mattresses, our own fixtures and fittings and all that. Today you have the guts to come and tell us you are taking 10%. How many government officials are living in paradise? How many government officials are still flying private jets? How many government officials are still living in huge bungalows without paying for electricity, not paying for water, free accommodation, and at the same time, they have free security? Yet teachers say, you give us empty rooms, we furnish it, and you still want to take 10%. Even though our salaries are meager and low, we chase you night and day to increase it. A lot of our colleagues have run out of the country to countries like Sri Lanka, Afghanistan. They are in such war-torn countries teaching, and they find those countries better than the peaceful Ghana. If you joke with us and say you are taking some 10%, we will not pay. He says, we will not pay the 10% you are asking us to pay. And if you push it, we are in trouble. We will leave the students to take care of themselves and teach themselves. Look at it. We won't pay bungalow rent. Don't dare us. Oh, do, 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 do. my brother, my sister, what is happening? Now, the big question I want to ask you is this. Do you think Ghanaians really do not want to pay tax or levies. Ghanaians will willingly pay rent and tax as long as the tax is used to do things that will help the development of the country. True or false? If I pay tax and the next moment I see that there are street lights all over the place, if I pay tax and I realize that there's some free accommodation, if I pay tax and security becomes better, Hey, if I pay tax and my children go to school and get some good tuition, why would I not pay tax the next time they ask me to pay tax? But if I pay tax and pot-bellied men and women are blowing the money like toads on the heat, you think next time I'll pay? When I pay tax and pot-bellied men and women with no clue will fly private jets all over the place, Refuse to listen to the taxpayer. You think that I would pay again? If my money is being used by heart. And I do not have any reason. Or any right to complain. You think next time you come knocking that I should pay tax I would pay? So is the same language a black one. Is speaking. The CCT people. Are speaking the same language. We are ready to pay tax. But if the tax is as senseless and useless as you are doing right now with our tax money, we are not ready to do that. In some countries, people pay tax and they are happy what they use their tax money for. In our country, no. 
people are ready to blow away the taxpayers' money on their pot bellies and on their retirement. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunubo, where we speak truth to power. When I return, we have much more. My name, Black Rasta, the black Liberation. It is time for the Kuchoko Roots Festival 2022, where we take the roots to the roots, where we take the Kuchoko from the ghetto to the grotto. Date is Friday, 15th April 2022. Time is 6 p.m. Until you drop, and rate is only 50 Ghana cities. It is happening live at the Alliance Frances behind the Opebia House, right there at 37. Hear me now. Now playing live is the ever powerful Black Rasta, your Kuchoko legend, and of course, Rex Sobar, Ghana's high life legend, and other fire blazers like Fee Rankin, Black AT, TK, Eddie Wayori, Zendima, and of course, the evergreen Vibration Kings Band. Make a date and don't be late. You must come and witness real. Red Hell on Easter Friday. Come, let us bury Satan with Kuchako, 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 Bam, Kuchako, Kuchako. Mr. President, why you they lie so? Before election, you tell me you be angel. When you sick, you run go a London. When we sick, we die for Kolebo. Skip a judge. Blackwood. Kuku Show. Skip a judge. Blackwood. Kuku Show. where we speak truth to power. Remember, we are live on Pan-African TV, also live on Loud Silence TV, live on Ghana Web TV, and live on our YouTube page. And that is the Black Empire Media. Black is spelled B-L-A-K-K. Black Empire Media. Well, the next thing I want to look out for is titled Kennedy, a Japan's Tears. Kennedy, a Japon's tears. My brother, my sister, Kennedy, a Japon is the untouchable man of Ghana. If you touch him, you are blackmailed. Hey! Hey! Kennedy, a Japon has been able to silence so many people with blackmail. Pure blackmail. When you talk, he will find something around you that he will bring out. That has nothing to do with the subject in question. And blackmail you so that everywhere goes quiet. He's done that to Anas, Armiyao Anas. Challenged him, came out, and even asked for the beating of one of Anas' journalists. A few days after, this journalist was shot in broad daylight several times. And he died right on the streets of Accra. From that time till now, nothing has happened. The killers have not been found. And Kennedy and Japan is walking free. My brother, my sister, he has also said time and again that he will burn alive the former president, Mahama, because he suspected that he and his ilk were those burning the markets in Ghana a couple of years back. He used unprintable words on the former president. He called him a fool. He called him a thief. 
and mentioned how much money he had stolen. And when Kerede Japan speaks, everybody goes quiet because he's the almighty, omnipotent, omnipresent. Everybody fears him. My brother, my sister, hear me now. The same Kerede Japan asks Asante to pick up big sticks and beat and break the necks and heads of others wherever they found them in the run-up to the elections. We all heard Kennedy Japan ranting night and day how he would pull down his own party. Now the thing is that Kennedy Japan is a very selfish man. Now what he does is if he doesn't have things going his way, He's ready to bring down everybody like Samson brought down the whole building on himself and the kings of Philistine who came together to do whatever. My brother, my sister, this is Kennedy Japan. He's an MP and he says that there is no respect in the MP position. He said it's cheap. The MP that he is. In fact, they took him to the Privileges Committee to answer questions. At the end of the day, we all don't know what happened. He's said to be the financier of his party. So when he coughs or sneezes, everybody catches cold. In fact, his own baby mother, Ajua Safo, he came out to threaten and say things about her, some of which were truly demeaning. In the past, he decided to disown his own daughter because she smoked cocaine or some other drug like that. In fact, he's so happy that he has 57 children. Is it 57 or 67? Whatever the number is, in fact, even by African standards, is huge. In fact, he doesn't hide it. He says he likes sex and women. Sometimes I admire him so much because... He says it just like that. But other times, ego. My party is in power. Once my party is in power, Ibrahim Mahama must go to jail because he's a criminal. They judge them before they take them to the court. Said Agongo must go to jail because he's a criminal. And many other people. At a point, he even said, Hey, if these people don't go to jail, I, Kennedy Japan, would drink poison and die. But the people are not in jail, oh, and he hasn't drank any poison. Oh. Or maybe he drank the poison, and then the poison all of a sudden uh, decided to follow prophecy. You know, Jesus Christ said in the Bible that we might drink poison and even step on serpents and eat poisonous substances that would not harm. Hallelujah. Kennedy Japan has attacked the church. And fake prophets and prophetesses in the past to the glory of the Most High God. The almighty Goliath fell in an American court. Boom to the ground like a bag of sand. Hey, one man who dared him face to face like in the days of the Israelites and the uh, Philistines. When Goliath on one side and David on the other side faced each other with a sling and a stone and, of course, the shield and the sword. Who is Kevin Taylor? Kevin Taylor was a suffering journalist who was running from place to place right here in Accra, trying to contribute his quota to the development of this country. Many of us did not know him. Many others knew him. He found himself in America. And then he became so angry with the system that he opened his mouth like we did several years back and talked about the ills of the economy. He and Kennedy Japan clashed. And it became a war of words. They both descended into the gutters, insulting each other. Somebody says your head like 1962 box iron. Another person says your father has a smelly soul. He's been shitting on himself in that his dirty palace. And I sit back and I say, is that how cheap people can be? Somebody says your head like 
1962 box iron. And you don't fire him back, you go back to his father. What has his father done to you? And his thing is that his father did not tell him to stop insulting him, so he would insult his father. That's how clear the Japan is. He's so good at attacking people who are not part of the war. It's a war tactic. If I have a fight with Mr. A, and I realize that me and Mr. A would fight till the end of time, what I do is I look for B, who is related to A. Attack B so that A might think about the attack and stop. That's Kennedy Japan. Now, Kevin Taylor went all the way to court. And what did he go to court for? Because Kennedy Japan took him to court and asked to get 9.5 million American dollars from Kevin Taylor for defaming him. What we call defamation. What did Kevin Taylor say at all? He said that the MP who was killed in Ghana, an NPP MP, Kennedy Japan had a hand in it. And he told us why. This was already peddled in the media. We also heard about Ahmed Swale, the journalist, who was part of the Tiger Eye, whatever, and that's Army Yao's group. How Kennedy Japan came out and told the whole world to look for the guy and beat him to pulp, and that he, Kennedy Japan, would pay. Because he's the almighty in Ghana. Everybody fears him. He has money more than God. Whatever he says, he's talking about the Rolex he's wearing. is seven trillion dollars. It has one billion diamonds inside. He shoe that he wears. Can, this king cannot even touch it because it's the shoes of King Midas. Jesus have mercy. Hear me now, brethren. Now, Canada, Japan took the man to court and told everybody in Ghana that he had sued Kevin Taylor. Now, it had, the war had become so bad that one man had to run to the court. Say, eh, hey. wow. So man passed man. Noise passed noise. If it was in Ghana, Kevin Taylor would have been silenced long time. Because these are the guys in power. They threaten you, insult your father, insult your mother, your great-grandfather, and you cannot do focal thing because they are in power. They have money. But a little Kevin Taylor, a fry like Kevin Taylor, sat in America in a small studio and threw salvos and missiles, and no anti-ballistic missile could bring down his missiles. K Kennedy Japan had to run to the court. In fact, if any man has ever been a thorn in the flesh of Kennedy Japan, then it's Kevin Taylor. He made him look small. In fact, he pinched him night and day to the point that he lost sleep. Now he ran to the court, 9.5 million, and all his supporters, yes, Kevin, Kevin Taylor will go to jail. Yes, the big man himself, the almighty, omnipresent, omnipotent, has taken him to court. And as for this man, he has enough money to put anybody into jail. Eh. Well, the court has decided. The judge, oh my God, O'Grady, that's his name. Honorable Liam O'Grady, that's him. He looked at Kennedy Japan in the face and said, your case has no merit. You want 9.5 watt stones or 9.5 ants or goats like the judges in your country take? You think this is Ghana? Where judges are bribed with goats, courtesy Anas Armiya Anas. A man is pulling a goat, is following him. Bah! Bah! Judge, I brought you this goat. My brother has been jailed because he killed 13 people in an armed robbery. This goat is supposed to be the sacrificial goat for you to free them. And judge will take it and free a terrible armed robber who has killed 13 people because of one goat. And you claim you are independent. Bribery in the parliament that even the speaker of parliament now, Alban Bagbin, bemoaned this situation. 
Ayaraga, or who was he? That other guy also came out, an MP, and said that they tried to bribe him to go a certain way with the voting. And they forced him in the parliament house, in fact, to apologize, even me, yours sincerely. They dragged me to the parliament house and asked me to apologize because of Ntampe, we, Kai Kai. Hmm? My brother, my sister, yet the judges and the magistrates are all collecting goats to free armed robbers, as Anas Admi Yao Anas's expose told us. And there are people who will sit back and defend criminals. The couple, eh? The juggernaut of Ghana's football, Kwesi Nyantechi, went bragging and laba laba in there in Dubai, telling a sheikh that if he was able to pay 12 million American dollars, Ghana would be for him. Because he, Nyantechi, had the president in his pocket. And Canada, Japan, this same Canada, Japan, the loud mouth braggart, my brother, my sister, was another guy that had to be bribed. So they'll give him $1 million and everything will be okay. And when the expose came out, FIFA decided to ban this guy, Nyantechi, and then Ghana too kicked him away. We have people like Paul Adumotri and even Kennedy Japan coming to defend a criminal talk like that. And you claim that you are an MP, that you want the laws to work. If you have a small confusion with somebody, your naked pictures are out there. Thank God we don't even have any dick. So we will see what kind of nakedness you will show. You will only show hips and legs. My brother, my sister, the country has become a, a blackmailing country. Everybody has become a superstar now just by coming on social media to tell things about other people. You come in, a camera, hey, baby, 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 this person went there and stole a goat. That person went there and had sex with a rabbit. So they become superstars. Nobody's going to the moon. I said nobody is going to the moon. How many of them are going to the moon? When was the last time you heard a Ghanaian had invented a nail? let alone a pin. But when it comes to talking on social media, senseless talk, criminals all are superstars. Well, Canada, Japan lost the case in court in Virginia. It's a district court. We were all told that he would win. Oh, this is El Capo. Hey, Al Capone. Hey, Skipper Judge. And he arrived. His case has fallen flat to the ground. Honorable Liam O'Grady said, hey, your thing has no merit. Number two, this thing that the guy said is of public interest. So why do you single him out? Is it because he brought a correspondence between him and a certain American lawmaker? And the lies you told the people of Ghana? Hey, Ghanaians, if we don't speak the truth and we begin to fear people that we should never even fear. I grew up in the Zongo. And in the Zongo, our mantra is one. You can't fear God and fear a man. You hear me? You cannot fear God and fear a man. It's only God who is a fearful being. And even God, that fear is the fear of love. You understand? My brother, my sister, Kredit Japan, you see your smoothness level? So at this point, a song is beginning to ring in my ears. Kredit Japan, cry on him, master. Before cry on him, master. You see that? Everybody has his master. Everybody has his limit. The guy feels so good. That he has some expose and people, big men are calling him all over, begging him not to expose people. 
Kere Japon, I love you, you know that. But Ghana first. Ghana first. I'm waiting for the day that any of these guys will come out and say they gave Black Rasta one penny to shut up on something or to say something. Then Ghanaians, on that day, if it happens to be true, then I would have told you that I failed. We are not angels, but we follow the footsteps of the Almighty Father, and we shall never let the people down. Hey, to Kevin Taylor. Aiko. Kevin Taylor. Echo Taylor. Aiko. Keep doing what you are doing. Yes, in decorum, in decency, and to God be the glory. At the end of the day, when the trumpet is blasted, the truth shall be separated from the lies. It's been the black pot. My name, Black Rasta. And I'll bash it away and deal with the next thing, man. How you mean? Skip a judge. Boy. Now, the next thing I want to look at, I have titled it, Is there 419 somewhere? Is there 419 in Ghana? 419. Eh? 419 COVID 19 testing at Kotoka. Hallelujah. Boy, skip a judge. Hey, hear me now to the bongo clippings. You remember when Nigerians were coming here, left, right, and center, and claiming that me, I didn't test positive, oh, and all of a sudden they said me, I test positive, oh, yeah, 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 Ghana, they 419, we will, and blah, blah, boom, 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 boom. Right? We are not going into that. A lot of those things came out to be false. Those people really tested positive. But here this interesting thing. A black one, again, my very good friend has come out. And what is he saying? He's saying that the mandatory PCR test at the Kotoka airport, so-called Kotoka airport, the only airport in the world that is named after a villain of a coup maker, Nana Akufuado. Nana Akufuado, with all respect. You fear coup? You fear coup? Pa, 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 pa. When you hear about coup, it's like, hey, 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 hey. You want to die. True or false? Voma, what? They locked him up. They arrested some old men. I think they are 92 years old each. They are about four old men that were going to have a coup. Hey, so in your country, Old men can stay your coup. 92 year olds. They arrested them and locked them up. Up till now, they are in jail. They arrested another policeman and added that, oh, they wanted to stay your coup d'etat in the country. Anytime you hear coup, you start shaking. But your airport is named after a coup maker. Is that not. <sighs> huh? Tell me. The airport is named after E.K. Kotoka. Who was a coup maker? The man who overthrew Nkrumah. Yet you fear coup. Why would coup stop in this country when your airport is the whole caboodle, the whole domicile of a coup maker? Anyway, that was just by the way. The PCR test, mandatory. It used to be 150 American dollars at the helm of the COVID-19. They cashed in on that. I'm told that they made millions out of that through some dirty fraud, 419 skirmish. They, they gave the contract to some 419 people. And they were taking money boof, boof, boof from the airport. A black one and his people say, hey, enough is enough. Oh. You have made enough money. You have cashed in on COVID-19. You have profited from COVID-19. Enough is enough. They just issued a statement. And it's coming from the minority in parliament. That they are going to be picketing. Look at it. Office of the minority leader in parliament. Look at the number of signatures there. 
Some of them look like fowls in the, in the sand playing. Look at that. They are going to be picketing at the airport to make sure they put pressure on the government to let go of this mandatory $50 PCR test. The former president, Mahama, said, why won't Ghanaians who have taken the job return to the country peacefully without the so-called PCR test? That is only making money for the government to blow away. Hey. If there's any man you should be sorry for in Ghana right now, and I said it on Happy FM some time ago, DJ advice arrest in peace. I said it on your program that I pity Nana Kufuado's government before he came for the second term. Because of COVID-19, he will suffer. And because of greed and corruption, he will suffer. You see? Hasn't it come to pass? All the sources of money for the government are crumbling down. Ejapa 419 kicked out. Hey, they came in with E Levy, is thrown into the wilderness. And now PCR, everything has gone haywire. My brother, my sister, this is the Black Fort, aka Kukushunemo, where we speak truth to power. If this does not happen anymore, Nana Kufuado, how are you going to make money to run the government? You see, when you were blowing money by heart, hey, Nana Sheyo, Nana Sheyo, hey, and one of him, if you, she, 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 Nana Sheyo, hey, Nana Gafra, hey, Spana, Nana Gafra. No, you won't hear. I can't hear, no. There be, there be no bill. My brother, my sister, this is the black pot. That's it, away. let me deal with the next thing. Now, briefly, this is going to be so brief. And I've titled it, Hallelujah. We're going to entertainment this time. It says what? Ghana Gunslinging Music Awards. You remember the VGMA Awards? Sponsored by the great Vodafone. So they call it the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. They didn't even have metal detectors. So people could walk in there with swords, knives, guns, and what have you. Some artists went there with guns. So when there was a little confrontation, Stone Boy pulled out a gun. And we all saw that. Every Ghanaian saw it and condemned. VGMA came down, arrested the two artists involved, Shatawale and Stone Boy, and took them to the police. The police locked them up. I spoke with Stone Boy on my radio show, and what did he say? It was one of the most terrible times he ever had behind bars. Shatawale also talked about it. My brother, my sister, VGMA gave them out and burned them on top, and even asked them to return the plaques that they had received on the day before the gun-slinging exercise. They were rejected by the VGMA. Today, I hear Stone Boy has applied so he can go there again and pick an award. And Shatawale says, because of what I went through, I need an apology from these people. What apology? Ghana Music Awards. Do you have the musicians at heart? When that thing happened, what did you do, according to the law, at least to cushion the two fourteen or fighting artists? What did you do? You led them to the police. Push them out, disown them to make it worse. You rub pepper into their wounds by asking them to return. The awards that they have voted, paid a lot of money for. Today, I'm so disappointed that Stone Boy decided to bury the hatchet and go back and join this 419 Fraud Awards. It's sad. At this point, I doff my heart for Shatawale until I receive an apology. Why should I follow that? Is it for the love of the plaque? 
or the love of the shine. So you are selling your bet right. Now, according to one cra, I think it's called Robert Cra, the PRO, shout out PRO. Says, Stone Boy applied. In fact, he, 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 he sent in so that he would be nominated. Well, you have been nominated. What are you going to do with that flag? What? Have you already forgotten how you were locked up and humiliated and your name went all over the world as a gunslinging artist? Did you get an apology from the people? They should apologize to the whole of Ghana for allowing artists to come in without a metal detector. Vodafone should have stopped sponsoring the 419 Fraud Awards. My brother, my sister, this is the Blackboard, where we say it the way it's supposed to be said. Remember, we are live on Black Empire Media. That's our YouTube page. Subscribe and click on the notification so you'll be notified every time we come on. We are on at 4 p.m. every day from Monday to Friday on Pan-African TV, Love Silent TV, and Ghana Web TV. And for such time, when I and I walk up again, God bless, no less, no stress, Black Rasta say what? Boy, skip a job. Come on. Come on. <laughs>